Hi everybody, welcome to Travelzilla. Today, I'm in one of the world's most fascinating places. Hi everybody, my name is Rodrigo and for the next few days I'll be here in Buenos Aires. I'm going to try to show you, you know, my favorite spots, the hottest spots in the city. It's a great city, it's definitely one of the world's most beautiful places. And, well, let's check it out. Did you hear that? That's how you exchange your money. So right now I'm here at uh, Calle Florida. And if you want to exchange money, this is the best place in the city. Buenos Aires is Latin America's third largest city after Sao Paulo, Brazil and Mexico City. It is home to 13.5 million people. The best way to move around the city is by subte or the underground system. It is the oldest underground system to be open in the Spanish-speaking world, in Latin America and in the southern hemisphere as a matter of fact. It's not that big, only 52 kilometers long or 32 miles, but it takes you to most touristy places. Buenos Aires is known as the Paris of the South. I wonder why. Now, we're finally heading towards Plaza de Mayo, which to me is the city's most important tourist attraction. And our first stop is the Metropolitan Cathedral. The church itself is wonderful in eclectic style. But this is not the main reason why I'm here to tell you the truth. I came here to pay my respects to General San Martin, one of the founding fathers of Argentina. He was responsible for freeing not only Argentina, but also Peru and Chile from the Spanish Empire. His remains are still here, surrounded by three statues that represent Argentina, Peru and Chile respectively. There wouldn't be Argentina without him. Right next to the cathedral, it's the Cabildo, or Town Hall. Today, home to a small museum. The sky was very cloudy, but the square was still beautiful though. The one thing I don't like about coming to Buenos Aires is seeing what populism has done to the country. Populism hasn't worked anywhere and I think Argentina can do so much better than that. Get rid of these people guys, wake up! Well, it wouldn't be uh, Buenos Aires if we didn't have protests everywhere. And there's always a protest in Buenos Aires, which is good, you know, they, they're exercising their uh, democracy, which is awesome. So look, all fenced up. I was so tired, I had no sleep. I was up all night to get this flight to get there. A lot of banners everywhere protesting. You know, anyway, let's try to get in there. Have a look. I was so annoyed. I didn't want this to be my view of the Casa Rosada. I wanted to show it to you guys. La Casa Rosada. Pink house. I had to go in. Watch me. The square is beautiful though. It's full of like amazing buildings everywhere. Yes, I finally found a way in. This is La Casa Rosada, or the Pink House, the place where the president of Argentina works. It's a really interesting building because it's a combination of two old buildings, the old presidential office and the old central post office. They got combined into one structure in the late 1800s. I was really excited to get in. We took a one hour and 20 minute tour of the building, which was great. The color of the building actually comes from the combination of the two opposing political parties. The red from the Federales and the white from the Unitarians.
La Casa Rosada is just as beautiful. We were in a hurry though, we needed to get back to our hotel because we have a tango show to attend. Hey, here we are. I stayed at the Scala Hotel in Buenos Aires in the area of San Telmo. Please make sure to watch my review of this hotel, it's on my channel. Well, I better get ready now. I want to show you the Piazzola, which to me is the best tango show in town. We spent about $100 per person to have dinner and to watch this amazing show. From the entrance, I didn't think that the theater was going to be this big. It's not only big, it's gorgeous too. I have to be honest with you, I wasn't expecting this at all. And when I finally got to see it, I had the same reaction. I was like, what? Word. <laughs> I had a great time there. The food was amazing. The show, incredible. The only downside is that I couldn't film it. Most of the footage of the food I lost. Sorry guys. That's Leandro and that's me. This was the best beef in Buenos Aires for sure. That's some of the food. Sorry I couldn't film it. So since I couldn't film it, I decided to make the entire city of Buenos Aires dance for me. So dance for me Buenos Aires. Baila para mí. right baby dance for me Since we're talking about the world's sexiest music, welcome to El Caminito in an area called La Boca. In areas like this, in the late 1800s, immigrants came from southern Spain and brought flamenco and mixed it with music from Poland, Italy, Hungary, with the music produced by African slaves and Native Americans. A mixture of all these people together created tango, and tango defines the soul and the spirit and the passion of both people from Buenos Aires and Montevideo. Tango is such a beautiful dance, all I needed now was a beautiful day in Buenos Aires. And 
And guess what? Yes, I finally got it! Good weather! It's amazing this new way that the city revealed itself to me. It was even more beautiful. How is that possible? My first stop on this perfect day was the city's congress, opened in 1905 and one of the most beautiful congresses in the world. The writing says, Todos somos putas, or We're all whores. Which is very appropriate when you're talking about Latin American politics, or politics in general for that matter. This is my favorite building in the city. After a 20 minute walk, I got to Galerias Pacifico, to me, the most beautiful shopping mall in the city. It was originally designed to be a department store, but is now home to 150 shops. Just come here. All I have to say now is, wow, just awesome. I went from the shopping mall to the iconic obelisk, the main symbol of Buenos Aires, built in 1936 to commemorate the city's 400th anniversary. Largest avenue, or widest avenue actually. Five minutes later, I got to Teatro Colón, inaugurated in 1908, a masterpiece, ranked by National Geographic magazine amongst the three best opera houses in the world. Too far from there, I found this jewel. To me, the second most beautiful building in Buenos Aires, the Palace of Flowing Waters. Can't miss that. Finally got to Recoleta at my favorite bookshop in town, El Ateneo. Once again, beautiful ceilings, great architecture. This is a must see, guys. Hi, we're here at the El Ateneo um, bookstore. It's Buenos Aires' is best. It's wonderful. Look, there's a coffee shop right there. Instead of a stage, you know, this used to be an, a theater back in the day. It's wonderful. Look at that. Great ceilings, you know. What a view! Is Buenos Aires really the Paris of the South? Well, I think it's much more than that. Buenos Aires is just Buenos Aires. The next day was pretty rainy all over again, so I decided to go to Malba, which also has an amazing restaurant. I had lunch there and definitely recommend it. Delicious. The museum also holds a very impressive collection of 20th century Latin American art, which include pieces that are world famous and worth millions, such as this one 
Alba Peru by Brazilian artist Tarsila do Amaral. It also includes pieces by Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo, both amazing and from Mexico, by world-renowned Colombian artist Botero and world-renowned Brazilian artist Portneri, as many other great pieces of art, including sculpture, political art, and interactive art, which I like very much. This was my favorite piece. Fifteen minutes later, we got to Recoleta. Walking, of course, I wanted to see Floralis Henetica. Hola, ¿qué tal? One of Buenos Aires' new iconic pieces of art. A flower that opens and closes as the day goes by, designed by Argentine artist Eduardo Catalano. 2002 inaugurated to the public. From there we visited the world-famous Recoleta Cemetery, a maze of art. That's what I had to say about it. So now we're visiting the infamous Recoleta Cemeteries here in Buenos Aires. It's amazing the amount of art you can find here, you know, from traditional families that migrated here a couple of a couple hundred years ago. It's pretty incredible. When you're there, one thing you can't miss is Evita's grave. She's one of the most famous Argentine people that have ever lived. The reason why I went to Recoleta Cemetery was not only to get lost in art, but also to pay my respect to the great people and their families that made this one of the world's greatest cemeteries. Thank you very much. During in 1858, and in 1880, moved to its current location. The food was good, and I love the ambiance. Definitely the most beautiful I've seen in Buenos Aires. So now we're an area we're at an area of Buenos Aires called Palermo, which is one of the best areas here. So let's check it out. Let's see what they have to offer. Zoo, look, there's a zoo right there. There's a really nice monument with fountains, which is really really cool. And then oh it's pretty busy here. So there you have like some residential buildings in Palermo, and you have green areas all over in every direction, that direction, that direction, that direction. Okay, so, it's awesome coming here. You know, if you're not afraid of walking and if you wanna just wanna have a relaxing day, perfect. Pretty enjoyable, really nice. After a few relaxing hours in the parks of Palermo, we decided to get to know the actual neighborhood a bit better, so we did a lot of walking around. The area is gorgeous, I would totally live there. After we walked and walked and walked, we found this mall called Alto Palermo. I really like it, 
for it has a great selection of shops and restaurants. From there, we went to a neighborhood called Palermo Soho, which is definitely one of Buenos Aires' coolest. This is where a lot of the cool, young and hip people of Buenos Aires hang out. A place filled with art galleries, cool shops, it has a very different vibe from Recoleta and San Telmo. I so wish I had more time to explore this area. Every time I, I need to come back here sometime in the summer. decided to go to another of Buenos Aires' great neighborhoods, an area called Puerto Madero. It used to be a port and has been regentrified to become one of Buenos Aires' hotspots. very lively area of Buenos Aires, it's called San Telmo. Blessed with cobblestone streets and historic buildings, San Telmo is an area of Buenos Aires one cannot miss. I love the cafes in this part of the city. It's a perfect place for coffee and medialunas, the local croissants. Also, a great place to do people watching. And one thing you cannot miss on Sundays at this very square, Dorrego, or Plaza Dorrego, is the San Telmo Fair, the best in town. Of course, I had to find an avenue called Brazil. You find so much art in San Telmo, so many antique shops. I had a full day in San Telmo, but of course I had to pay a visit to Mafalda, Argentina's most famous cartoon character. She's so cute. Mafalda. Hey guys, tell me what you think. Is Buenos Aires really the Paris of the South? At first, one may think so, certain areas of Buenos Aires do resemble certain areas of Paris. But the city also has areas that will remind you of London, Madrid, Barcelona, Vienna, Budapest. It's really a mixture. Although it may look like many other cities, it's still very unique because the culture here is completely different. The food is different. This resemblance is due to the fact that people here came from many places in Europe. What's fantastic about this city is that they rebuilt this in the other side of the world. Still, I promise you that in this city you will feel the energy of tango. You feel their passion for life and their passion for good living. Buenos Aires is one of the world's most beautiful cities and is a very unique place. To me, everybody should come here at least once in their lifetime. I feel really fortunate I had the chance to be here. Now it's time for me to go back to my hotel because tomorrow I'll be in Montevideo the capital of Uruguay. Please make sure to watch my video of Montevideo. I'm gonna go there via Bukebus, which is the shuttle service. 
that links both cities in an hour and a bit. Guys, thank you so much for staying with me until the end. I really, really, really appreciate it. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel, follow me in social media, and watch my other videos. Please don't forget to travel. Don't forget to enjoy your life. Goodbye.